a toast to you, the crew of the Pabuklan Wren. You have had a rough time. You have been um, caught with a, a partially green crew in a situation that is hitherto unknown in UREF history, in the annals of the UREF history. And your ship is behaving differently, and the robots are behaving differently. The bots in this game are behaving differently. They're not called robots. They're just called bots. Uh, in the future, the row part of bots has, be, has, decide, has been decided to be superfluous. And in the interest of, of, of shortening words, it's just bots now. Kind of like apps. Um, in our world, applications have started to become apps, which has also been applied to computer programs. I don't like that word apps, but that is how it is, and I have to accept it. Otherwise, I'm just going to be an unhappy man. And you will be unhappy as well, crew of the Publucklin Wren, if you don't accept that the ship is acting weird, um, that you're heading towards this this planet, Crystallia, and the in a, in a beam of crystal energy has just flashed from that planet at the ship, and I have to roll to see if it hits you. How do you think that makes me feel? It doesn't make me feel very good. Okay, I don't want you to be hurt. But life has to have challenges, otherwise how are you going to grow? How are you going to reach your potential? I don't know. I don't know. And I have to say, you know, despite all the adversary, adverse, adversity, adversity, brought on to you by adversaries, not by me, you've done something. You got rid of all the robots on board, which is very good. And it wasn't even luck that allowed your ship to come away unscathed from the crystalline blast. Um, because you didn't have to use luck to change these die rolls. That was just the way it was. They just didn't didn't shoot very close to you. So what I just rolled was um, a targeting roll. I don't know if that's really the, the name for it, but that's what I'm going to call it right now. It's a targeting roll. And how that works is we look at how the ship is oriented towards what's firing at it. And as we see here that the prow, I'm brushing up on my nautical terms uh, to help myself sleep. I am an insomniac. Um, the prow is facing the planet here and it is the planet that is shooting at you, um, or rather your ship. Okay, so the middle column here the, the blast is coming from this way. So the middle column is a 7, which we know on a 2d6, the 7 is the most common result. In this case, we got one of the least common results, a 12. Um, okay, so we have a 7 here. If we had gotten a 6, it would have hit along this line, which would have been very bad for you. Um, because, yeah, that would, have, that would have hurt these guys here. If it would have been an 8, it would have hit these guys here. So it's one column up. 9 would have hit here. 10 is a miss, 11 is a miss, 12 is a miss. All right. Um, similarly, 5 would hit this engine here, 4 would be a miss, 3 would not be a miss, and 2 would be a miss, and 1 is impossible. A little more rules for you. So one of the reasons that um, Lieutenant uh, Corpulent Runt uh, did the um, scan of the ship instead of scanning Crystallia once again is because every time she uses the science bay she has to put one of these markers on there. Um, these markers make it so that I took it off because at the end of the round it goes away. These markers mean that subsequent uses of the science bay are more difficult. Um, the missile bay also gets those markers but the markers make it so you just can't use it again unless I am horribly wrong but I'm pretty sure that's the case. Um, same with the engine. If you have one of those markers on there, you can't pump the engine again. You can still use it to shift power. You just can't pump the engine, which is how you just create more power. Um, so those markers makes it more difficult to scan the ship, which is what uh, Lieutenant Corporal or Corpulent did. I say corporeal before. I, corpulent Runt, Lieutenant Corpulent Runt, did at the end of the last turn, which she scanned the ship which is a distance of zero, so that's a base difficulty of zero, so adding the plus three difficulty from one of these markers is really no big deal. All right, so a quick reminder of where we're at. The ship is heading towards Crystallia. just got shot at by Crystallia, the, the blast missed. Um, these ships here 
all got hit by missiles. They're pretty much out of control. They're UREF ships. The crystal ship is somewhere off this way. Um, five hexes off that way, because that is that is information that you would know. I just, uh, I'm not going to go over why I don't show that. Um, but the ship is, we're back in control of the ship. All the out of control is gone now. Um, the ship is powered up as it is at the beginning of the round. We're in round two right now. Um, Snugbug here is stunned. DJ, no, not DJ. She's X-Ray, the crossing guard lady, is stunned right here. Lieutenant Capazoid is stunned right here. And Merker is right here and might be stunned if he remains uh, at the end of the turn. But he is going to try to do some piloting, I believe. Um, Lieutenant Corpor Corpulent, I almost said corporeal again. Corpulent Runt is right here. I haven't decided what she's going to do yet. I'll have to think about it. Um, it's pretty close. She could get a scan off pretty easily. Um, so last turn, the, the, the players used her scan of the ship to ask a, a yes or no question about what's going on. Uh, the question was whether or not the ship was being controlled from an external force. My answer, it took me a while to come up with this because it was kind of a, it was an answer I couldn't really answer with a yes or no, so I had to answer yes and no, which I think is maybe frustrating, but uh, that's, that's more truthful than if I said one or the other. Um, so yeah, that's tricky. The The rule book says that you can give that answer. You're just supposed to say it's neither yes or no. I'm being nice and I say it's yes and no because I feel like that gives a little more information and I'm all for being helpful. So with Lieutenant Corpulent Runt's assistance, um, Lieutenant Junior Lieutenant Merker successfully moved the, uh, the ship prow this way, so it's going to be heading away from the planet. Hopefully it will continue in that trajectory. This poor ship just crashed into the planet. It's gone. I'm sorry for your loss. This phase everyone's preparing, or the two people who are able to do anything. Merker here is preparing. Uh, Lieutenant Corp Cor Corpulent Runt is also preparing. The gas cleared out, and that's the main reason I'm talking to you. I want you to know the gas has cleared out of the room, which is which is nice. Did I mention the ship got steered back towards the planet? It's not quite heading um, directly at it, however. It's kind of, um, it's, that's the trajectory. If it can, if it steers again, though, I don't know, it's kind of in an awkward position. It'd be hard for it to steer that way. Another ship has crashed into the planet Crystallia. Um, just after that happens, a communication comes in informing the crew of the Pobluckland Wren that the clone banks, once activated, are getting destroyed by bots. So anytime you die after a mission, or whoever dies after a mission, if there are people who die, a clone bank is going to be destroyed. That's really sad. With the regular attrition just from what everyone else is doing on the UREF, um, there's, there's approximately about five of them that are useful to the characters. So after those five are gone, because every time they're used, the bots come and destroy it, then death is real. Power has just left the helm and been added to the guns. Um, the guns have been used once already to shoot a missile at this guy right here, who is in fairly rough shape right now. So it's not just the helm that's being operated by some unknown force. Other modules in the ship are also being tampered with, such as the engines, which is what would have transferred the power, and the missile bay, which is what would have shot a missile. With all her preparation and her skill, um, Lieutenant Corpulent Runt had an excellent role on um, scanning Crystallia for data. So she rolled an 11, and she got to add 5 to that, which is 16 minus the distance. 4, she has to add 12 points. That's going to give the crew... I need to get a marker, but um, it would be 2 with a 0 next to it. 20 data points, which is worth two intel. So that's two special questions you get to ask at the end of the mission. The Pobuckland Wren has shot another missile 
at this biz at this business ship right here. It's a scout ship that is out on business, and it is wondering why three separate missiles have been shot by the Pobuklan Wren uh, right at it, and it's not very happy about it. On top of the bots that are massacring its crew and everything else, uh, its own its own compadre, the Pobuklan Wren, is shooting missiles at it, and it is complaining rather loudly over the communication system. Just sending out general messages, hey, we're in trouble, hey, the Pobuklan Wren is shooting at us, they're a bunch of jerks. Um, in brighter news, uh, Lu Junior Lieutenant Merker was able to turn the ship so that it is definitely heading away from the planet right now. Uh, we're in phase five, so the ship, since the speed is still five, the ship's not going to move next phase, um, and we're actually going to have to stop because... Lieutenant Corpulent Runt has asked another yes or no question about the ship. And so I gotta I gotta upload this and send it to the people who are crewing the people who are crewing the Pablucklin Wren so that they can decide what yes or no question they wish to ask.